Brilliant. So hello. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Steve Bolton, uh, Conservation Officer um, with Butterfly Conservation, and my colleague Ailey is the Engagement Officer, and we both work on the Big City Butterflies project. And we're going to give you a bit of an update to where we've got to on the project um, so far in the last couple of years. Um, so yeah, Big City Butterflies is a four-year National Lottery Heritage funded project um, working across London really to engage Londoners, uh, connect them with nature, and their local green spaces and just to give you a bit of a kind of background really um <clears throat> historically butterfly conservation have tended to focus uh, on rarer species in the countryside uh, but more recently recognizing the value of urban green spaces both for habitat conservation and for engaging with a wider audience and as you can see there's many green spaces and lots of fabulous opportunities for um, working across London uh, on different nature reserves, uh, parks, uh, and yeah, nearly 50% of London is green. So lots of opportunities there. <clears throat> and one sort of example, a little nestled away in central London is the Barbican Wildlife Garden, um, where they've done some excellent habitat kind of management work to provide some good habitats to support butterflies and moss and lots of other wildlife. So you can see that the meadow area that they've created there, um, surrounded by a variety of kind of native shrubs and trees um, to, to really support the, the maximum amount of biodiversity in a, in a small sort of urban site. And the example of that in terms of butterflies and moss, it supports breeding common blue that you can see there and butterfly uh, and really looking to create um, the habitat requirements for, for butterflies and moss in terms of uh, feeding, so the nectar sources, um, breeding, things like the caterpillar food plants, and, and then the shelter that they need, and things like the overwintering habitat. Um, so, really supporting breeding populations, and that's what we need to do to kind of reverse some of the declines that we're that we're seeing in butterflies and moths. Yes, because that that wider picture is not not great at the moment. And there's a recent um, state of UK butterflies report um, showed that eighty percent of um, all butterfly species are, are in decline uh, over the last um, 50 years. Um, and that's not just the, the kind of rarer um, habitat specialist species. These are all wider countryside species shown on the screen. So the small tortoiseshell um, are once sort of common and widespread species that showing that decline of 73% of um, over the last 40 years. In the bottom right there, the, the large white, um, uh, or some people call it call the cabbage white has also declined by 30 percent so um, there really is this widespread decline and we need our urban green spaces to work um, harder and better to support uh, butterflies and moss and, and try and reverse that decline and support their recovery so yeah to, to sort of respond to a lot of these issues um, we set up the big city butterflies project so just to give you a, a quick um, idea of the objectives and the main objectives so the first one to help London is discover and connect with butterflies, moss and, their, and the green spaces that support them. So we're working with quite a wide variety <coughs> of, of different partners, different communities, and Ellie in particular targeting um, uh, um, communities that we haven't really worked with before to kind of spread the word and raise the profile. We want to improve the quality and connectivity of green spaces and to increase their suitability for butterflies, moss and other wildlife. Um, and again, that's working with a variety of partners from friends groups to, to councils um, to provide site advice. And I'll come on to, come on to that in a, in a bit more detail. We want to increase the levels of recording and monitoring across London. So that's gonna help us better understand how butterflies and moths are faring and kind of target our conservation um, management. We're also looking to increase opportunities for BC to engage with new audiences um, so yeah, that's particularly where um, different communities that we haven't worked with before, and, and again raising that profile and using different different ways of engaging with audiences. <clears throat> so arts and crafts, for example. And then we want to develop and test new approaches to conservation in urban contexts. So that's trying and uh, different methods and, and developing better case study information for kind of what works and what doesn't work in an urban urban setting. <coughs> And yeah, this is the, the project area. <clears throat> so we're focused on 17 London boroughs, mainly inner London boroughs. Um, 
uh, and uh, that is also uh, working with the associated branches. So Northwest London in pink there, you can see is the, um, represented by the Hearts and Middlesex branch. So we're working very closely with the, um, the branch uh, leaders, but also different members from those branches to sort of coordinate some of our activities and really develop that, that long-term legacy for the project where we're um, getting more volunteers in, in, those, in those areas for, for the branches. <clears throat> so we've got three main areas that we're working on in the project so um, I'm going to talk a bit about recording and monitoring and habitat management then I'm going to hand over to Ellie uh, to talk a bit about engagement so so far one of the main one of my main roles is doing butterfly identification and recording training workshops uh, and we tend to do a PowerPoint presentation uh, where we introduce some of the different butterfly species, give lots of tips um, about how to identify them, when to see them, um, <clears throat> and some of the different recording methods that people can use um, depending on their, uh, their availability, their time availability, and what, what their interests might be. Um, we then follow that up with a, with a walk, a guided walk on a, on a local site to put that into practice. And we've had some great sessions over the last couple of years and, and, and met with a wide variety of groups. So just a few examples there at Beckenham Park in Lewisham. Um, <clears throat> they've, they've done a lot of restoration work actually of that park and they've got this lovely old sort of cottage garden area um, and a butterfly helpfully posing on a flower uh, that the lady's pointing to for this shot. Um, that was a good session there and we're hoping to establish some more, uh, well, some transit recording on that site um, this, this coming year. <clears throat> Eastbrook End Country Park um, up in the northeast in, in Dagenham, um, really extensive country park setting, loads of great grassland habitat, uh, but not, not all that much recording. So um, that was a more of a family friendly focused event and, uh, and getting some kids up and close with some, some butterflies, including this, this small heath that we, that we catch caught for them so we could uh, get them a nice view of it. <coughs> uh, Gillespie Park in Islington is another, another example, a really nice, um, well, yeah, pretty much managed as a nature reserve, as a nature reserve actually in Islington and supports lots of butterfly species and it's these core sites where we can work to kind of make them as good as we can and then work around them and, uh, to help uh, connect up different sites as well. Uh, and um, this was supported by Paul um, from the branch as well to kind of link up with, with the branch and the work that they're doing. Um, so yeah, the outcomes of that is really to try and establish new new recording and monitoring schemes. So we've, we've, we've set up 17 um, new schemes actually since the, since the project started. Um, and some of the examples shown here, Elton Park, that's one in, uh, um, in, in Greenwich actually, sorry, not, not Lewisham. <clears throat> um, that was recently set up just this last year. So we had a couple of months of, of transect recording as a, a transect site um, with 12 species recorded. And you can see the, the kind of transect route, um, just an example that's been set up there, broken down into sections. So um, we've got uh, a small group helping to walk that transect. And we've had, we've had others um, set up and the Wormwood Scrubs has been a really good relationship with um, some site managers there in Hammersmith. Um, again, extensive grass and habitat, we've recorded 20 species and, and a lot of the rough grass in there um, need sensitive management, but yeah, really fantastic for, for um, the small, small and Essex skippers there um, with a count of over 300 um, this last year, 2022, yes. <coughs> Uh, Hanging up forest um, in Redbridge uh, again. That, that's um, got got a good project going there. A lot, another lottery funded project with a team of, of staff doing um, some good engagement work and more recording work. Um, they're doing some moth recording on that site as well, actually. Um, so yeah, that's a we, we now have established. We've got twenty species there uh, and a really good um, colony population of small heath. Um, that count one hundred thirty one from this this year. At, um, sorry, last year twenty twenty two. <clears throat> then as well as the butterfly schemes we've got um we can supply moth traps to different community groups so we've got five new moth recording sites that we've established uh and um yeah we had 25 species recorded on one night in, in at beckenham place park 
Um, and that one is in lotion. Um, so my other main area that I work on is, is habitat management. Um, and a big part of that is the site advice visit. So <clears throat> hopefully you can see those blue markers. So we've got a good spread um, indicating the site advice visits that I've made all, all, all across that kind of project area. Uh, and then the pink uh, markers are the 31 sites that we've gone on to sort of support uh, um, and improve in terms of funding contractor work, for example, or supplying seed or plants uh, and trees for, for sort of planting. Um, and a lot of that work involves uh, working with different volunteers, getting community involved. So I've got a few examples of that. <clears throat> um, but yes, in terms, of, in terms of an overall kind of some of the, the, the facts and figures of the last couple of years, um, really pleased that we've, we've, we've got up to 4.2 hectares so far of meadow either created or improved. Again, working with lots of different partners. <clears throat> and that example there is from uh, the tractor and this, uh, that's some scarification that we've been doing um, to enhance uh, an area of fairly sort of species poor um, grassland um, with the scarification followed by seeding to try and get more, more wildflowers established in, in that bit of grassland. That's Avery Hill Park in Greenwich. Um, then, uh, yeah, 206 shrubs and 36 trees planted. So again, with a wide variety of partners, um, that, that example is at Roding Valley Park, actually just, yeah, I think that was just on Sunday, actually. Um, um, so sometimes we attend these events and support them and, and um, can give sort of talks as we're doing it. Other times we just supply the plants and let the, let the groups kind of get on with it, really. Um, so that was a the Redbridge Ranger team and um, some vol local volunteers at Roding Valley, uh, and that's planting disease resistant elm trees to support white lighter hair streak butterfly. Then, <clears throat> yes, we do, we can supply lots of different um, uh, plug plants and pot plants um, for all different situations. Um, uh, this was doing some kind of shade tolerant plug planting. Um, things like uh, Primrose uh, and, and Selfiel uh, at a site um, called Elmhurst Gardens, again, uh, in Redbridge. Uh, and that was a, a nice event to, to get local families and kids involved as well. <clears throat> um, so yeah, in some boroughs we've been really active and where they've got good sort of links with the community, um, uh, some of the, the, the kind of council staff members, we've been able to establish a kind of network of sites, which is great um, to help support connectivity between sites um, to allow butterfly populations to kind of expand and, and multiply um, with more suitable habitat. So <clears throat> that top left there um, was great to see some, some wildflowers getting established on a kind of housing estate um, in Islington. Um, and that's working with some local volunteers that are really keen to see, um, you know, that the kind of environment improved as well. You know, that the kind of look at the look at the place improves as well as hopefully supporting biodiversity. Um, we've got sites like uh, Graham Street Park on the top right, um, establishing some uh, wildflower areas along this kind of verge and hedge, and doing some hedge planting as well. Bottom left, we've got um, a really, really lovely little wild um, community garden, which are very much a kind of wild space and aligned with our new kind of campaign for, um, you know, really creating lots of feeding, breeding and, and, and shelter habitat to support butterflies and moths. Uh, yeah, that's uh, another one in Islington. And then King Square Gardens bottom right um, is working with the parks team who look after a number of the different parks and gardens across across Islington uh, and they wanted to establish a, a, a wildflower area in that particular garden so we supported them um, supplying seed and plug plants. A few more examples, um, <clears throat> this one from Dulwich Park um, where they had established some, some quite good wildflower areas but um, it tends to be mainly annual planting, annual wildflowers, um, which are a bit more limited in terms of supporting biodiversity. So we wanted a, a, a more of a 
varied seed mix with lots of perennials um, in there as well, like uh, knapweed, oxide daisy, birds with trefoil, um, which are going to better support and provide those nectar sources and the caspillar food plants. So um, that was 2021, I think we did the seeding. And then you can see this picture um, from over the summer. Um, we, there are um, some wild, annual wildflowers in there to give some colour in the first year, but, but it's mainly perennials in the mix, which will begin to come through um, in, in years sort of two and three. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops, but it's certainly looking good at the moment. And you see a small copper butterfly there that was recently recorded on that site. <coughs> um, we've had a really good partnership with um, friends of Clapham Common. Um, who had uh, established some of these wildflowers, done a bit of turf stripping and establishing wildflower strips, um, which had um, been reasonably successful. Um, they did find they were quite a lot of work to, to manage and maintain and were being invaded by ryegrass and wanted to do something a bit bigger and more ambitious. <clears throat> so we came up with a plan to do um, some topsoil stripping um, of this area nearby of kind of, you know, Lambeth, uh, this is in, in Lambeth, had already identified it as kind of a, a naturalised grass area, um, but it's really just rye grass and no, you know, no support of biodiversity really. So by scraping off um, the topsoil, um, we used, we then used that topsoil um, to form banks uh, kind of around uh, the edges to provide shelter. And that exposed um, the subsoil um, in, in the central areas, which is ideal for seeding and then supporting the wildflowers and stop that rye grass coming in and taking over. So you can see some pretty good results there. Um, you know, in just a few months from when it was seeded in, in spring 2022. Uh, and then, yes, we, we've got that flush of the kind of annual wildflowers like the poppy you can see there, the marigold. Um, but now, um, those have died back. We're definitely getting the birds with trefoil, the oxide daisy, uh, vipers, bugloss, those sort of um, wildflowers becoming established. So it's going to be interesting to see that develop. <clears throat> uh, another area of work we can support is horticultural planting. So many parks uh, and gardens obviously have, have more formal planting areas uh, and there are some sort of garden type plants, a bit like the Verbena, you can see in the in the photo there, <clears throat> uh, and uh, things like wallflowers as well. They're really good, provide good nectar sources um, through the season. Um, so we can supply and support different different councils, different parks teams um, with those kind of plants as well. Uh, and um, yeah, with, with climate change in mind, we're getting some interesting feedback that um, the verbena in particular um, fared very well through the through the drought conditions over over last summer. So, getting some kind of useful feedback on what works and what doesn't work. <clears throat> we do quite a lot of tree and shrub planting. Um, again, that providing that variety of habitat. Um, trees and shrubs support um, many different moth species and also help provide shelter um, as well. So. Um, providing different community groups with a variety of um, trees and shrubs. Um, so uh, Avery Hill Park, the image on the left there, um, they've established a new woodland planting. And we were keen to provide some buckthorn, um, which is a food plant for the brimstone butterfly, because uh, that's not one they'd included in their scheme up to that point. And then we also applied, provided them some disease resistant elm. <clears throat> Uh, to support what that's a hair streep uh, and yeah it's more elm so it's the new horizon variety um, on the right there at valentine's park <clears throat> and they were keen to actually to establish a new kind of elm walk or avenue to replace an aging and dying ash tree so um we put in quite a few uh, trees there and doing more next year and uh, yeah if you're not familiar there's a new um butterfly conservation website guide to um, Dutch elm disease resistant elm trees um, with different uh, varieties and recommendations for, for which trees are suited to, to which um, kind of habitats and um, <clears throat> also different suppliers there and actually there's some, some more recent suppliers that do 
quite cost effective smaller trees um, that, are, that are working really well. So that the Lutis variety in particular is, is um, a bit more cost effective than some of the bigger standards. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, finally from me then, um, and uh, the other area of my work is the train, habitat management training workshop. So I've done 13 of those uh, so far all across London, working with different partners. Uh, and one of those recently was um, at Victoria Park. So you can see the image there in Tower Hamlets. And that was a great um, training opportunity uh, because we managed to get lots of different teams in from across the borough, across Tower Hamlets. So we had the, the kind of grounds maintenance team, uh, the parks team and the housing team all attending that workshop. Uh, and out of that, we developed some good links, good relationships. And yeah, the, the sort of image there on the left shows um, some butterfly scrapes where we're going to um, scrape back the topsoil and do some seeding and get some wildflowers established in there on the edge of their, one of their main playground areas in, in Victoria Park. Um, so that should be quite exciting to to get involved in <clears throat> and a good engagement opportunity as well. Um, and then, yeah, the Ocean Drive example is just one from uh, some of the sites that Tower Hamlets homes manage across the borough. Um, and they're already trying to create wildflower, wildflower areas, but struggling to get much biodiversity or many perennial wildflowers established. Um, so we're, we're supporting them to, to sort of get um, enhanced and improved meadow habitat, hopefully going in some of these sites, which is more can be challenging on, on the sort of richer soils. But um, there's always <clears throat> ways to enhance and improve. Um, so, yeah, lo lots of um, exciting work and, and more planned um, working with various partners and um, targeting areas uh, to make sure we're improving that and enhancing that connectivity where we might have a few blank spots on on the map if you like to to really um, help link up different areas and different communities so i will leave it there stop sharing and hand over to ellie to give you a bit of an update from her thanks steve so just bear with me while i share my screen um steve can you let me know if you can see it once i've got it up yeah yeah I see that yeah brilliant um thanks steve so as steve mentioned i'm the engagement officer on the project so i will be taking you through the engagement part of the project um and also a few different other areas as well um like the campaigns we're supporting on um so to start off with just showing you a similar map to um the one that steve showed you earlier but this time showing our engagement activity so you can see we've worked all across london um the yellow markers are things like community events um, and public events. And then those sort of coral colored markers are the schools, school workshops that I've um, worked with so far. So I'll go into those in more detail, um, but really the sort of aim of the engagement strand is to make sure that we're reaching um, wider and more diverse audiences, um, which Steve touched on earlier. Ooh. There we go. <laughs> so um, starting off with school workshops, I've uh, worked with 51 schools so far. I'm sorry, delivered 51 school workshops so far, um, working with 11 different schools across London. Um, and I've got lots more who I'm working with this year um, and also on the waiting list as well. So really loads of interest, um, which is which is great. So we've built up quite a community since the first year um, and we've engaged about a thousand children. Um, so we do a series of two workshops and the first one is um, all about an introduction to butterflies and moths and really um, getting them excited about nature and conservation um, and also dispelling myths as well. So um, not all of the children, but quite a few of them are a bit um, scared of moths um, and might not know that much about them. So it's kind of all about showing them the beauty um, of all the, the different species and the diversity as well. Um, and we also focus on why butterflies and moths are important for the environment um, and also how we can help them. So we finish off these workshops doing a planting exercise. Um, so sort of thinking about that habitat management of the school grounds um, and we plant plug plants and seeds um, which will support butterflies and moths. So uh, nectar um, 
plants that uh, provide nectar and caterpillar food plants as well. So there's some pictures there um, of one of my school workshops. Um, but it's just really great to give the children an opportunity to connect with nature um, in a different way. Um, and I just wanted to show you this example, which I was really excited about last summer. Um, so one of the plants that we um, often plant is nasturtiums. Um, and that's because the nasturtium seeds um, are nice and big. So it's good for the children to handle. Um, and they grow quite quickly um, and quite rapidly <laughs> across um, areas. So it's quite nice for the children to see that as well. Um, but we were really excited in this school because we came back um, in the summer after a few months and we found some small white caterpillars, which you can see there. So it was just really great for the children to see um, a caterpillar food plant actually being used. Um, and then I return in the summer to do a second school workshop uh, with the same class. And I often work with multiple classes in a school as well. Um, and this one is building on their knowledge further. So we talk more about the life cycle um, and use butterflies and moths um, for, as an example of the life cycle and also talk about adaptations at each stage of the life cycle. So um, the adaptations that the caterpillars have to survive um, or the adults. Um, and this is a really fun one because we get to bring in live specimens and um, you can see the children interacting with them um, and yeah, having that connection to nature that they might not have had before. So um, I also deliver community events. So these are working all across London um, and delivering a range of different events. Um, and as mentioned earlier, the, the aim of these is to, to reach a wider, more diverse audience. So um, again, Steve touched on earlier, but it's not just delivering things like um, butterfly walks and talks, although we still do lots of those. Um, it's all about thinking of different ways to engage people and um, to get people to uh, connect to nature in a different way. So I've got a few examples here. Um, so the one on the left hand side is um, a photography workshop that I did with um, 11 to 16 year olds. Um, and that was with our partners in Hainault. Um, so we we took them uh, through an introduction to photography, uh, but made it really accessible. So we provided um, clip on macro lenses for their phone cameras. Um, and just made sure sort of everyone could get involved no matter what equipment they had. Um, so yeah, really, really getting into the green space and having a look around um, and talking about the different butterflies and moths that we might find. Um, as another example on the top right hand side, which was an intergenerational day I did at um, the Albany Arts Centre in Lewisham. So we worked with um, a couple of different groups at the Albany. So one called Meet Me at the Albany, um, who are a regular group um, that work with elderly people. So we, for that one, we sort of thought about memories around um, butterflies and moths um, and how things have changed. And then we also worked with their youth group um, who are regular in the holidays. Um, and you can see there we made some masks and they put on a fashion show, which was really fun. Um, but throughout the day, we do lots of different activities um, to get different people thinking about why butterflies and moths are important and also how we can help them as well. Um, and yeah, just spreading our passion and knowledge um, to different groups in London. Um, so yeah, the lots of different um, ideas for the community events, but we also theme them around uh, the other two strands of the project. So we do some events that focus on identification, um, looking at the different butterflies and moths we might find in London and how we can count them as well. So linking them to um, campaigns like the Big Butterfly Count. Um, and then also, as Steve mentioned earlier, um, we also theme them around planting or gardening. So um, just sort of repeating a couple of the ones that Steve mentioned, because um, they fit in well here too. But the um, events such as elm tree planting that Steve did in Redbridge, um, and the Elmhurst Gardens community planting on the bottom right hand side there. So that was planting plug plants. Um, and then also thinking about habitat management um, and helping butterflies and moths in a different way. So the one on the left hand side, bottom left hand side is thinking more about smaller spaces um, and how we can provide plants for butterflies and moths in private gardens or balconies or window boxes or whatever space people might have in London. And that one was in Holland Park in Kensington and Chelsea. 
Um, so a really exciting part of the community engagement program is having a budget to deliver arts projects um, with local communities. And we have budget to do one big one of these per year. Um, so the one that we worked on last year um, was called The Colour of Transformation. Um, and this was amazing because it ended up being a much bigger project because we partnered with um, a really great artist called Bryony Benj Abbott. Um, and she applied for an Arts Council um, fund and then uh, we received that with her. So she sort of led the whole project. We, we were a lead partner on it. So it's a really, really great way of sort of building our reach further um, and reaching new people through these projects. So um, hopefully some of you might have attended that or heard about it, um, but it, the project culminated in a film which was part documentary, part artistic response. And you can see the film projected on the left hand side picture there. Um, and that film was all about sharing the stories of seven women of the global majority and their journeys into conservation and um, the event environmental sectors um, and the outdoor sectors as well. Um, and the documentary and the artistic response uh, were all inspired by butterfly metamorphosis. So um, kind of using butterflies to um, engage people in a different way rather than, you know, the usual ecology um, of butterflies and moths. Uh, so we had a number of different screenings in Meanwhile Gardens, which is one of our sites in London that we work with, um, which is a really beautiful community gardens with lots of different areas in it. Um, and you can see it was projected onto the side of the building there. Uh, but we also were involved in a couple of other ways as well. So we worked with a local, sorry, um, a youth action charity called Action for Conservation. And they do lots of work with um, younger people to get them into conservation and the environment. Um, so you can see on the top right hand side there, we were working with them to do a live stream. So they took over our butterfly conservation Instagram. Um, and we also live streamed the first screening of the film on Butterfly Conservation's YouTube as well. So really thinking about reaching new audiences there. Um, and finally, the project culminated in some community art workshops that myself and Bryony led. So that was engaging with um, the local community around Meanwhile Gardens, the sort of regular users there, um, and getting them to learn more about butterflies and moths. Um, and this, this workshop was focused on shelter and what butterflies and moths do in the winter. Um, so you can see there was lots of, lots of paint and lots of fun had there. Um, that's just a different view of the first screening that we had. So we had quite a few people um, during that one. And the other thing that Action for Conservation did, which was um, really, really great, was their youth ambassadors were really involved throughout the project. Um, so you can see their three youth ambassadors we worked with there and they curated some resources um, which were aimed at young people um, who are black and people of colour who are interested in getting involved in the conservation and the outdoors. So they put together lots of different resources um, that inspired them to help other people get involved too. Um, and really the whole project, as well as um, being inspired by butterflies and moths, was all about um, how we can increase representation and diversify the, um, the sector of conservation as well. Um, and yeah, just to finish off about that project there, we had lots of different um, really amazing feedback and some of the, my favourite words um, were people saying they felt seen and empowered, so it had a really nice impact. Um, and just to focus on another community arts project, this one was Mothfest. And this was in Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park. And this was another one that was inspired by a really amazing artist called Lena. And she's in the bottom right hand side there. Um, and her work focuses on raising um, awareness about moths and the threats they face as well. And she focuses um, specifically on light pollution. So that's what inspires her work. So we had a whole day in Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park um, with the team there. Um, and we started off with a moth breakfast that you can see on the left hand side. So did some moth trapping and ate normal breakfast <laughs> um, and had lots of people from the local community coming. Um, and then we did a whole host of other activities to um, 
get people to learn more about moths and discover how amazing and diverse they are as well um, and how important they are too so uh, lots of arts activities like cyanotype sun printing um, screen printing and we also did some walks as well um, and Ken who works at Tower Hamlet Cemetery Park led those walks so you can see kind of see him in the top right hand corner uh, but that was him leading the walk there uh, but we looked at butterflies, moths and their habitats, but he also got people to connect with nature in different ways. So looking at specimens, um, looking at the plants that butterflies and moths might eat and thinking about foraging as well. Um, and then this last, these last pictures that are coming up um, are the community um, arts activity that Lena did with um, people that came to the event. So again, she got people to think about um, the threats that moths are facing and kind of think about their environment and how they how they see flowers um, and what they need as well. So we made a communal art piece there. Um, and this evening all culminated in a showing of Lena's installation during the evening. So um, it's this big light installation and it's immersive. Um, people lie underneath it, which hopefully you can just about see there. Um, and you lie down on these mats and the spoken word poetry um, as you lie down. And um, it, yeah, again, all to raise awareness of moths and get people to connect with them in a different way and think about the space that we share with them. Um, and we had some really great feedback on that. Um, lots of people saying that they thought of moths in a different way after that. Uh, so as well as the community engagements on a, um, engagement events on a smaller scale, we also attend these bigger public events. So things like uh, festivals and country shows. So a couple of examples here. Um, but so far we've attended nine of those events and have engaged with about 5,000 people. Um, so yeah, we managed to sort of speak to a lot of people on those events. Um, so they're normally very busy, um, but they're a really great way to meet people in the local community and um, build up our network, but also promote different campaigns, which I'll mention later, um, and um, get people to um, try and help butterflies and moths as well. So by counting them or by gardening. So those are all, always really good fun. Um, and we're always looking for new events to attend as well. Um, with my engagement activities as well, one of the really important things that we are doing in the project is supporting um, a non-profit group called Wild in the City. So Wild in the City support people from Black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds um, within London. And that's so they feel more comfortable and confident in natural spaces. Um, so you can see Beth on the left hand side there, who's the founder of Wild in the City um, and leads these um, courses called Nature Connectors. Um, so we are funding two of those courses and the first one will start this year. So at the moment, myself, Beth and um, one of her amazing Nature Guide volunteers are looking at our sites in um, the project area and finding out which one would be the best for this. Um, and those courses are all about increasing knowledge um, and developing skills that um, people can pass on to their local communities as well. Um, so we're really excited to um, get that course on off the ground in 2023 and then another one in 24 as well. Um, and so we've, we've gone through the three different strands, engagement, habitat management and recording and monitoring. Um, but I thought I'd give an example of um, where we're now linking them together in different areas. So creating that connectivity. Um, so one of the projects that myself and Steve have been working on is the Greenway Pollinator Trail project in Newham, um, and that's with Newham Council. Um, and it's also supported by um, the National Park City Rangers as well. So we've got a few different people working on this one. Um, so the Greenway Trail is a seven kilometre long traffic free um, route, um, and it's a, a bit of a green corridor. So they are planting that with wildflower seeds um, across the trail and Steve's also been giving some advice on different feature areas um, which will support different species of butterfly and moth so there's going to be four different feature areas um, down the trail um, but we've been involved in lots of different elements of this um, and we're still delivering this at the moment so we've been supporting Newham with the engagement so last week I 
um, supported an artist delivering um, a number of community workshops in local libraries. Um, and over three days, uh, we spoke to and engaged with, I think, about 150 people. So it was, yeah, really, really successful. Um, and it's all about talking about the Greenway Pollinator Trail, uh, but also butterflies and moths and why they're important as well. Um, similar to the school workshops I mentioned earlier, we've got a school workshop this week, um, which is very similar to the library workshop I just mentioned. So engaging people with the trail, but also um, pollinators. Um, as I mentioned, Steve has been busy giving habitat management advice for the trail. Um, and we've also got some community planting days coming up. So um, getting lots of plants in the ground um, with the local community to support butterflies and moths and that those will be in the feature areas that I mentioned. Um, and finally, um, there's also further activities planned as well. So things like butterfly walks to teach people how to identify butterflies and moths. Um, and we will be encouraging people to record them along the trail and in the local green spaces around the trail as well. So lots of stuff that we're involved in, but um, as well as the those sort of three main strands that myself and Steve work on, we also um, use the project to promote uh, different campaigns uh, that butterfly conservation is running as a whole. So um, hopefully you've all heard of the big butterfly count. Um, that is one that we uh, spread the word for quite a lot in the summer. So when we're out at those events, we often theme um, activities around the big butterfly count and get as many people as we can out counting London's butterflies and moths. Um, but also Steve touched on it earlier, but Wild Spaces is um, a newer campaign and um, it's one of butterfly conservation's new strategic goals. And the mission is to have 100,000 wild spaces by 2026. Um, so again, we're out on the ground um, trying to get as many people as possible to register their wild, their wild spaces if they've got them already or pledge to create a wild space. So we'll be doing lots of activities this year and next year. So things like wild spaces workshops. Um, a couple more things before I finish. Um, we've also got a bit of a network now. Um, so really, really nice community um, for Big City Butterfly. So we would love you all to join. Um, but I think Becky might be on this call, but just a massive thank you to our volunteer, Becky, who has been running our Instagram. Um, she's grown a really big following for us, but um, it's a really great chance to build an online community um, and reach other people as well. So um, we've got lots of uh, fun things on there. So showcasing the d diversity of butterflies and moths and how amazing they are, um, but also keeping people up to date with our progress. Um, some good news stories, um, the partners that we're working with, um, and also campaigns as well. So you can see our Instagram on the left there and then our Twitter on the right hand side. Um, and it's also a place where we do put different events um, that we're running as well. So before I finish, I just thought it'd be a really good chance. Now we're sort of reaching the end of the two first two years of the project and we've got two to go. Uh, just to let you know about some of the headlines from our evaluation work. So we're working with an external evaluator on the project to um, see how we're doing and look at our progress towards reaching the outcomes that Steve mentioned earlier. Um, so, so far we've had 109 surveys completed. Um, so these results are based off that. Um, we've also got a lot more coming in. So we've we've got a lot of people that we've reached through this. Um, and our external evaluator has helped us um, create a toolkit. So lots of different methods to um, find out how we're doing. So things like questionnaires. Um, Claire, the evaluator, has been busy interviewing people um, and yeah, lots of other methods as well. So I'm just going to pick um, four different highlights. But we found so far that people are learning new skills, which is amazing. Um, and I won't read out all of these stats, but I'll pick a couple. So um, through the surveys, 99% of people have said they've learned something new, which is really good. Um, we've also found that people are learning more about Lepidoptera and nature conservation. Um, so yeah, 90% agree that their knowledge of conservation or nature and wildlife in general has improved. Um, and 86% are more aware of the importance of butterflies and moths. And a couple more. So 
people are being inspired to take action. So um, 83% of people said they're more likely to protect their uh, local green spaces. Um, and 51% have said that they're interested in taking part in the big butterfly count or the garden butterfly survey. So we're also finding that people um, are willing to do other things like counting butterflies and moths to help them as well. Um, and then finally, uh, our results have shown that people are feeling more connected to nature and wildlife, um, which is another really important area of the project. Um, so 75% said they agree that they feel closer to nature and wildlife and 76% said they are more likely to visit local green spaces again. Um, so really promising so far, but the um, evaluation data that we get is really important for showing us uh, what we're doing well, but also where we can improve as well. So we're always looking uh, to make the biggest impact we can through the project. And finally, just before we finish, um, we're always looking for new volunteers as well. So. Um, you can see we've got loads of really exciting things that are going on and upcoming. Um, so please do get in touch if you're interested in volunteering. Um, you can get involved in any any part of the project and we're always willing to hear um, what you're interested in um, and we can have a chat about what you might like to do. Uh, but a couple of areas where we're looking for volunteers at the moment um, are definitely with me doing some school workshops. Um, so please do email me if you'd like to do that. Um, and also, Steve, you might have to um, cut in here but I think we want to have a transact in each of the boroughs and I think it's City of London that we're looking for at the moment isn't it? Is that right? Yes, yes yeah. that's right. Brill. Um, but yeah we're, we're looking for um, as many people as we can to count butterflies and moths as well so please do let us know um, where you are and if you'd like to count butterflies and moths as well. So that's it from us, um, but we will open up to questions. Um, but I've just put down there the ways that you can keep up to date with our progress. So the Instagram and the Twitter that I mentioned, uh, but also our letter that I put, our letter, our newsletter that I put in the chat earlier. Um, so yeah, please do sign up to that. We'd love to have as many people um, as we can on that. Um, it should be at the top of the chat after people are introducing themselves. Um, there's mine and my and mine and Steve's emails there, so please do get in touch with us if you're interested in volunteering or have any questions or ideas. Um, and then also the couple of campaigns I mentioned there as well, so wild spaces that both myself and Steve mentioned, and also the big butterfly count there. Great. So I will stop sharing for questions, and also I'm going to stop the recording so that people can ask those.